Hi, this is Mia. I, um, part one of this video, I don't feel like redo, I don't feel like posting two videos. Uh, my son was coming downstairs and he's really having issues and he, he hasn't talked for like a week to me because he's angry. And then he's done this before, so it's been like two to four weeks of not talking to me. He's angry. Um... It's hard to want to study and do stuff when you have someone in your house who, I mean, it's almost, like, abusive, like, because he's got an attitude problem, and it, there was uh, behavior like this with their dad, and when I was living there a long time ago, where, you, where it's, like, my heart feels shallow, and the person you live with, who, who you're supposed to, who's, you're supposed to love each other as family, or whatever, friends, family, whatever, when they're treating you like garbage, it's stupid. It's like, I can't get away from this. <laughs> so to get away from it with other family members, other families were mean and they died, other family members would just don't live in their house, other family members you just are friends you don't talk to anymore, but it's like, once your own child, it's like, uh, and you tell the authorities the truth. I am talking more about physical issues, and it's hard to believe that Someone's like, oh, you need to file a police report if your kid hurt you. I was like, oh, I don't even think of that. Same with my with my ex-husband. It's like, I don't even think about it. I don't even think that you could do something like that. If there's an event going on or a car, there's been hit and run to my car, people breaking into people's windows, drug deals going on next to the park, next to school, next to other school, right next to my front door, I would call the police a few times. I'd call the police, and no one would come. And a couple of times, uh, I've called the authorities because, like, there was babies outside for like eight hours, and they asked me, "Is there an adult outside?" And I was like, "Another woman, a random lady who's not related, and not watching these kids is outside." And like, okay, then, don't call us back. Call us when there's actually a problem. Like, the police said that to me. There was a baby. This is sad. There was a baby getting beaten. Uh, this, really, this lady had, like, what, she had, like, six kids. And the baby was getting beaten by the older brothers. And I was sad for the baby. And they were outside, what's it, four, three or four hours? I was sitting there watching them three or four hours. And... When you got a bunch of boys, all the way up in age, beating on someone, I, I had to protect me and my kids, so I wasn't going out. You know, I live in places, you know, where people will destroy your car, mess with your house, you know, gr steal stuff through you, window blinds or windows that don't have screens, because the manager won't put screens, you know, kids will reach in and take stuff, and the parents are right there, and they don't even make them give it back and you're like give me my stuff back and then the parents look like they're gonna beat you up because your kid you're asking for your stuff back. like that's the places I've lived but yeah this bo this boy was getting beaten by the older brothers and thrown around and I call the cops and I call the child welfare I think but they were mad at me for wasting their time because they said it wasn't an issue and a, the kids shouldn't have been outside for four hours unattended in the sun with the baby. There's one thing if kids are coming in, if your kids, if you live like right where a playground is in an apartment and your kids are coming in and out or there's a parent that's staying in the doorway, but and that happened a lot in that place. And one of the girls, when I walked, when I moved in, her and one of the other neighbor girls were helping me move and it was like 10, 11 o'clock at night. They were carrying stuff in. I was getting paranoid. That they would be like, oh, what does she have? I'm going to come back when she's gone and steal it. I was scared, but I was also, as a single parent, and you move your entire house from one apartment to another by yourself. Sometimes you're just like, whatever, hell. Like, I had some desperation, hell. I had some lady who was like, she had like a contagious skin disease. I was like, I didn't know it till after the last bag. I didn't even have boxes back then. Just the last bag of stuff was moved she told me that I was like ooh I hope you don't have that whatever it was but I had to call the police when the other girl next door was being beaten having her head 
thrown into a cement floor or ground, being screaming during the days and nights. And the girl was five and, you know, bloody and I don't know. I just, it just hurts my heart. What hurts my heart, besides the fact that a child is getting beaten, what hurts my heart is I don't like calling the police. I don't want to waste their time on some thing that has nothing to do with anything. And it's also bad when somebody runs into your car when your kids are in the back seat and the police won't come to your house <laughs> or come to the accident scene, like a hit and run accident. And we get a letter in the mail. I got the license plate, description, just car type, model, color, description of the driver, hit and run. And the police said, we have, this was an un, like an uninsured driver from out of state. We have his name and address. We don't have time to pursue this, but if you want to sue him for damages to your car, you can hire a lawyer. So like, so it's okay for this dude without insurance. I don't even know if he was licensed. The car was registered in somebody's name. It could be a stolen car. I probably wasn't. They would have done something with a stolen car. Maybe not. It was like, so some dude runs into my car with my kids in the back seat, drives away. I gave all the information. Make a police report. Um, I made a police report the next day because, or yeah because we had groceries in the car and I waited for the police to come before like four or five or six hours and when you have a limited budget and you and you buy all your month's food and some guy drives away it's like take the food home take the food home and then like then decide to make a police report later because I've I don't I mean I had to deal with them before not coming and not caring my priority was to not starve my kids for a month because, you know, I don't know if the store would be like, oh yeah, we'll store in the free fridge for you. I don't know. Well, like some people are now, they are rude. I don't want to deal with all that. But, yeah, I got yelled at. All three times I just told you about with the hit and run and driver. They're like, literally the letter's like, we don't have time to pursue, you know, hit and run, unlicensed, uninsured driver that we know the name of. Or at least the person who owns the car. Like, are you kidding me? And then it's like... I don't know, my friend, I think was, was it hit, I think that was hit and run too. She got rear-ended by a hit and run. I think her car wasn't total. She thought it was. And she was in a lot of pain. That sucks because it's like then your own insurance has to pay for it, all that. And they won't even pursue it. And then these people just keep, they know they can drive and run if they get in a wreck, if they're drunk or whatever, whatever reason they got in the license taken away. Anyways, I said I wasn't going to make this long, but. I told authorities about well, how my child was acting. I kept the story lame. Like, n I didn't tell every all the stuff because I noticed when I try to report somebody else, I noticed I start getting in trouble. I, I've noticed that I'll start getting notices in the mail, that I start getting notices on my door, that I start getting phone calls or threats. Even a staff member at my school, I told him how my son was acting and I needed excused absence because it, I was, well, I didn't need it, but I almost missed a test and I had asked, is your policy still accurate? Um, absences based on family emergency and I just wanted to get information because worse than having a family emergency is knowing that you're missing a test. And they threatened to call the authorities on me because of the way my son was acting. <sighs> And nobody believes me. And there, I was like, she, this lady, I actually think I was going to call this lady in the morning. But my test became a priority. And then the way my son acted, I don't want to go into detail. And she goes, oh, if you'd actually got a hold of me in the morning. Because I ended up hanging up on all, everyone's answering machines. Because I needed to not sit there and wait for all this message. If you have this, call 911. If you have this, call the crisis line. If you, you know, I don't have time to listen to all that. In an emergency, so I I would hang the phone up and not. She goes, if you had, if you had actually talked to me earlier, I would have called the authorities on you. And that you know, and that I just walked away. But yeah, and I've had another boy at daycare center who was abused, and I'd already dealt with calling the cops a couple other times, and I, they, I refused to make the report. However, I did, I did it anonymously and had the. 
the manager take down the report word for word what I said and then report it because I was I, I get concerned that you see something see no evil you know hear no evil speak no evil and it's like you hear something and all of a sudden you want to look the other way or you think oh you know I left my hot cocoa cup on the counter for three days and if the authorities or the inspectors would come in or I splashed a little bit of soup on the side of the stove. Like in the place I live, they come and see stuff like one cup and one splash on the stove. They can evict you. Like literally. They even, they sent me letters, like three le different letters saying if if I even had cobwebs in my house, I was going to be given a 30-day eviction notice. I was like, oh my gosh. With forced air, forced air heat, that stuff happens spontaneously. <laughs> like... Your eye heat comes on and some spiders been up in your heating vent. All of a sudden, you come home and sometimes you've got crazy stuff going across the ceilings. And I've had that happen before. You walk into a room. I mean, we could get evicted for having the light bulb, light bulb burn out. And one time before an inspection, they can catch you with this stuff even without an inspection and kick you out. One time during an inspection, I had turned on all the lights. I never used the ceiling lights. I like lamps. I use ceiling lights in some rooms. And I don't like those fluorescent compacts. I've almost had a place burn up. It, the only reason the house didn't burn up is because the an apartment because the it kept tripping the circuit breaker, and I never knew how to set reset them because at the one where we lived, you had to turn it all the way off and back on. I never, I never had one blow, and it kept tripping it. Um, I think I figured out how to turn it. I called the manager, and she told me how to turn it back on, or the case manager, and it kept tripping it. And I just what didn't use it, and I waited till maintenance came because I was like, I don't know what's going on. And they, of course, came in and put their. I had cloth kitchen table, the kitchen chairs. They of course came in with muddy shoes, stood on my kitchen chairs, where my kids were toddlers. They took it upstairs. They took my kitchen chair upstairs, cloth covered kitchen chair, completely covered with muddy footprints. They had taken down the lamp replace the wires the wires were on like I saw it sparking the wires had all were sparking all over had sparked so there was all burned and they had cut the wires and replaced them in the foil from the ceiling and all the wire pieces were all over the floor and there's mud all over everything and he just left all the garbage like that which is hard you come home when you have toddlers they put that kind of stuff in their mouth I don't know if lead Metal, you know, stuff that gets stuck in their throat. Like, I don't understand people. And then they try to evict me because there's, like, a cobweb that spontaneously appeared and they came into my apartment without permission. Like, like they they have taken pictures of stupid stuff like that when I'm gone. Just, I think it's just a mess with me. <laughs> stupid. Like, literally, they've shown me pictures. And there was no inspection notice. There was no, we're going to enter your apartment. There was no emergency it was just the simple fact that I was gone, they had the key, and they chose to, and they tried to say my guinea pig was in the food service area. My guinea pig was in the living room in front of the couch on a coffee table that I bought specifically for him because it was cheap at the Salvation Army thrift store. In the cage that he was in back then, I'm like, and they showed me a bunch of pictures. I was like, I didn't even want to look at the pictures. I'm like, what did they do? Put them in? the refrigerator and start taking pictures of them, put them in the oven and start taking pictures and be like, you have your guinea pig in the food store. It's like, in my place was huge. It was, was it over 1,200 square feet of this apartment and it was like, the kitchen was way, way over there compared to where the couch was by the front door. I'm like, even the guinea pig, he wouldn't even crawl that far and when you let him loose, he wouldn't even go in, into the kitchen. I think the hamster did, because I put him in there in the ball. It's because I put him in there in the ball <laughs> on the floor, because it's linoleum. and I can wash up after him. I just want to take a break. Um, I'm sorry, I, telling you guys my story makes me feel like I'm crazy, but I, I sometimes want people to know. I mean, I, I did see some YouTube videos where people set up surveillance cameras, and they were having their managers come in and out of their apartments without permission, or they were they were already had given a notice that they were going to move out and they were having their apartment shown without permission like they were and i've saw i've seen some and it is kind of creepy 
Um, and my friend, my neighbor, not my friend, my neighbor was like yelling at me and giving me the evil eye about what an idiot I am because I'm mad because these creepy, creepy people are coming in out of my place at all hours of the day, morning, and night with or without me home. Seven days a week they do this. And sometimes my kids are home alone. When I moved here, my son was uh, nine. He was like eight or nine when we moved here. And when I left him at home, it was only with my daughter, who was like 10 to, 10 to 11. The first time I would leave him like for a couple hours from one class. But then after that, when they got older, that like 10, 11, 11, 12, 12, 13, the people are coming in and out, and I, I was like, I'm so tired of this garbage. And she goes, you can't be, you can't be mad at them because you don't own this place. Don't you remember? You don't own this place. They own this place. I mean, legally, you, we have the key. They have a key. Legally, you need to put a minimum of 24-hour notice. I mean, if they're knocking the door and said, oh, my gosh, we need to check something, or we didn't clean something up the other day, can we come in? If I say, hey, my kid's in the bathtub, no, come back tomorrow. I should, be, I should have a right to do that. If they ask like that, they all, I say no. They say, too bad, I'm coming anyway. And that's the manager. But to come to come in on a Sunday, you know, my daughter is a teenager. She We keep the blinds. We keep, there's some modesty, you know. Like when I was a kid, I don't want to be sitting in my, you know, night nightgown because, you know, in 100 degree weather, sitting in a night shirt as a 12, 13, 14 year old with my hair up in rollers, you know, and sometimes as a kid you don't want anyone to see you without makeup. You're with your parents, so it's fine. And what they do here, they'll come in and work on stuff and they'll leave your wide, wide your front door and your back door or they'll take all your windows and blinds off. And it's like, for me it's like, this sucks. I'm going to go put a robe or something on. But for my teenager, PD's daughter, it's, to me it, it makes my heart drop. Because it's like, it's not appropriate. And there's no notice. There's no like, knock, knock, ring, ring. We're going to come to your place in the hour to do some work that's urgent. Because, you know, if you know, even if I, even if they tried to say, oh, we have to do this. Let the teenager, it's your house. You're gone. You're in daycare. You're at school all week. You've got people bothering you all week. And sometimes you want to let your guard down. Or sometimes you're sick with a flu and you decided, I'm not doing the dishes today. And then that's the day that all the people are coming in our house, literally giving you dirty looks about what a slob you are. And you're sitting there like a single mom, like having diarrhea and vomiting. Like, how many times has that happened to me? Having the flu type symptoms or food poisoning, cramps. And you're like, <laughs> I... If I don't, you know, I've got friends, all kinds of friends my age, even in their 20s, they'll keep pushing themselves and they end up in the hospital. And most of these people have husbands and stuff. Like, oh, well, they're in the hospital. I'm going to drive the driver there and I'm going to take care of the kids. And then, you know, the church is going to bring dinner to us and, oh, it's going to be just fine. But in my situation, when I had that happen, that usually does <laughs> It's like... If I get sick, I'm driving myself to the doctor and I'm not driving myself to the hospital because I'm not having my kids put into foster care because there's no one to watch them. You know, I've had many friends in hospital because they pushed themselves so far and then they got sick with pneumonia or sepsis or, what you know, the list goes on and on and on. So it's like in my best interest to maybe let the dishes go and or let the laundry go for a couple of days when you know spending all your time on the toilet you want to rehydrate yourself and then that's the day those people write you up or come in your place and you're like about to die and your minimum for the day was making sure your kids even probably with me I always drive my kids it's like making sure the kids get to school and making sure they eat their square meals a day and you're like there's no respect and I have friends that tell me that I think I'm a victim and act a certain way and it's my fault that people treat me this way, but I, I don't know, I don't do this, I don't say this garbage to those people. I don't tell them and give them dirty looks because something, you know, if I have a friend who's got a messy place, 
or they have a lot of books like I do or, it's, or something's disorganized. I mean, I have friends that were somewhat organized that had their place full of cockroaches because they had like grease from meat and st weird stuff all over their kitchen floors despite their fact that they are known as being organized. I don't go, I, I mean, I was over there helping one of my friends, which I didn't want to because I was stepping on cockroaches. And I was like throwing all of my clothes when I got home. I'm thinking I should have been at my own house cleaning and avoiding the, someone told me that you step on a cockroach, the seeds, are the seeds, the eggs have come out on your feet. I was like so paranoid. And they had me for I walked to the garbage dumpster. I came back and there was like cockroach stuck to my foot. And I was like smash. I was like, oh my gosh, it was freaky. I was like, thank God. So I don't like leaving windows and stuff open. But anyways, I'm babbling on. I have to study for class. I have about two, It's 9 o'clock, 9.15. I have to study for about two hours and then sleep like six and study for two whole hours and get myself to school. I have two tests. They're both cumulative, so 10 weeks of instruction. One of the classes is three teachers, and I just read one of the study guides was 33 pages long, despite the notes, which is hundreds of, at least 100 or 500 pages of notes, which I'm still going through, so I'm going to stop this. I just wanted to say some of the things that happen, and when this stuff happens, it's like you you don't want it to happen. You're not putting a sign on your head saying, please come in my house and bother me and my kids at 6.45 in the morning when we're about to get it, when someone's about to get in a shower, or when your kids sleep, when your teenagers sleep. I don't purposely tell them, invite them to come take the windows and blinds off her window while she's laying there without covers. It's just, it's like embarrassing. It's like, it's, it's almost, that's why I, when I go to the zoo, I feel sorry for the animals because I'm like, Oh, it's no respect, you know. It's no respect. I mean, at least the animals, they have some place to hide and stuff. They're still caged in. But I, w I wanted it to stop. Like, if I had a choice, my mind is getting... I've been threatened so many times. for, And they try to evict me because they don't like... Like, because like, I have flower pots on my porch or something stupid you know and I'm like just like oh, are you kidding me or because I had like a chair on my porch like an outdoor chair on my porch when they wanted me to use those cheap plastic ones how many times have you seen people break those by sitting down and spill their cappuccino all over themselves or whatever it's like I don't want I wouldn't mind those chairs but I have the money to buy. I have the chairs that I could afford you know I had the fold-out camping chairs from years back or whatever ones I used, the fold-out chairs. Actually, I went and got the fold-out ones. I can't afford the plastic white ones. Those are expensive for my budget. Um, I, I hate that. I, I just... I used to get evicted for paying my rent on time. Or not get evicted, but get notices because at one of the places, the place with the abuse kids, they had... Most people did not pay their rent till the end of the month, which is, it was due like the first five days of the month, and I'd pay it on the first of the month, and this is one of the ones where we had to take it in person to the bank and give the just deposit slip, so I guess it, even if I pay it the first of the month, it probably takes a couple of days to, because everyone in these, managed by these people, probably had it, and then they probably wait to a certain date to do a checklist of all of the, I don't know how they do, I'm just speculating. But I imagine because we had to take it in, it probably took a while for our checks to clear. And then somehow through a public bank, they have to figure out who paid at what time because based on the statements, carbon copies and all that. So there had been a time, because I would always the first of the month, first of the month. Unless the first was on a Sunday, I can't go to the bank on a Sunday. And yeah, they did, um, they did put eviction notice on my door for non-payment of rent. I went to the case, it was the manager, but I went to the case manager, who's a different, that's more like lifestyle, like how to go grocery shopping and dress your kids type of lady that was there. She, she's like, oh, you always pay your rent on time. I was like, I have my receipt. And she looked it up and she goes, oh, what I think happened is because everyone else pays like three to four weeks late when she got the list of things or whatever, the current list, it's like my name wasn't with everyone else's, it was like, because I was actually the only one who paid on time, I don't get it, so they probably waited to like the 31st of the month, every month to see people, 
who who paid on the 31st. So, ooh, I hate this stuff. I I hate always trying. I don't I don't want to be like, look at me. I'm doing the right thing by paying my rent on time. I'm like, a I don't want to be in trouble for breaking their law, and b do unto others as I want them to do unto me. If I own that place, I want people paying the rent. I don't have to deal with this other garbage. So, I would want. Especially, I mean, I'd want somebody to pay on time. I'd want somebody to not put holes in the wall. I'd want someone to not be beating their kids and having a death. That's what I was most afraid of, was that someone was going to be pulled away on a gurney with a plastic bag, a zipper bag around them. And that was what... I don't want to contribute to tearing apart a family, but when it, when something happens... It's one thing when you see brothers and sisters fighting hurting each other because someone got in a rage. That's not even okay. But if you see a teenager that's like 12 years older than the, than the little girl and then the mom becoming violent, really abusively beating the garbage out of this kid on a regular basis, it's like I, I had to speak up. It's really, and I don't know. I had some issues with that place because but the man case manager was crooked. She uh, also, I think she was buying, they were supposed to be giving us gift cards regularly, which I don't think I ever got one. I didn't know that either. But I think what she was doing was taking them and buying cigarettes and stuff with them. Because she'd go around door to door and be like, can you just sign this thing and say that you got a gift card for me? And I was like, no, I didn't even get one. <laughs> I was like, I'm like, I didn't even know you gave gift cards. And you would look... When she would, every time she'd come around, she does more than once, you would see these lists and sheets of, like, certain people would get, like, ten of these gift cards a month. And they're like, I've lived here, like, a year. I never got any. <laughs> it's like, I could have used extra money for toilet paper and, you know. I don't know. It's stupid. It's really hard. It's really hard to feel like you're doing the right thing and then have these extra stress stresses overwhelm you to the point that then people will see you as a weakling because you're tired. You're physically, mentally, and emotionally drained dealing with the stuff. You know, people would pick at me and I'd have to, you know, I'd have to get... I had people pick at me at school and I had to get like five people to back me up to say that what they're trying to accuse me of doing is not true and have to report it my side of the story about something that just blindsided me it's not like I tried to go in and have somebody take a test for me or something it's not like I tried to premeditate something it's like someone I turn in a paper someone accused me they say oh this is so good uh, that you couldn't have wrote, written it like oh, I wrote it it's like I my computer had said what I spent like was it seventy hours so ridiculous amount of time on this paper ridiculous a lot of my classmates like the day before it's like oh yeah I, on Facebook ten o'clock and I better get stars paper let's do I've been working on it seventy eight hours and then they accused me the other day that uh, multiple times my doctor supervising physicians thought I was graduating and they're like oh you're doing a great job and they're always putting me alone with the patients. And I'm always doing all the um, treatments and stuff as directed, and and then they're they're like they kept saying, "Aren't you graduating next week? Aren't you graduating?" Like, no, and they're like, and to me that's like, "Oh wow, you're doing such a good job. I thought you were going to graduate." And then they gave me like satisfactory score. <laughs> I was like, "Can I have like a above average <laughs> on one of these?" I was kind of upset because. If they think you're going to graduate, that means they think you're doing really well. And if you, they didn't think you were doing well, if they thought you were doing unsatisfactory, which is one step under satisfactory, they would have pulled you aside and been like, you're about to graduate, you really need to pick it up. So that's what I was concerned about. I'm, I'm being just a big baby and I'm procrastinating more than five minutes. So pray for me. I have finals tomorrow, two of them tomorrow, one Wednesday, one Friday. I have three clinic shifts. Um, this week, and it's Monday night, and I'm, I'm really scared. I'm like, if I had boots on, I'd be shaking in them right now, but I have striped socks on, so I'm shaking in them right now. Um, I'm just mad. 
I'm mad about all the stuff that happens to me and my kids. And I'm mad that people yell at me about saying, oh, you will always get help. We always, people help you or your church helps you or these, people speculate that I'm getting all this help. I just heard a crash in my son's room. I got to go check it out.